the thing is time on this channel that we start asking, you know, the really heavy, important questions. And so today on Chromophobe, I'm going to be discussing whether dogs are colorblind. Let's start by asking some authoritative sources, like, uh, like this Android app called Animal Vision. Now, it might be listed under the entertainment category, but um, that, that doesn't mean it's not accurate, right? But, uh, let's select dog and, uh, huh. Well, I guess blue's a color. Let's just double check these results because I want to make sure we're practicing robust science. I'll just double check on YouTube. Search animal color vision, pick the first video, find the dog, and huh, it's uh, it's the same thing, black and bluish. I mean, nobody would make up science on YouTube, right? Like who who would do that? Uh, but just just to be sure, um, maybe we could query the um, the the. Until as late as 1985, scientists thought, with few exceptions, that primates were the only animals that were capable of seeing color. Despite some dog owners insisting that their dogs were among the exceptions, scientists not having any of that. Although some claim that dogs do possess very weak color vision, the dog is generally thought to be colorblind. A dog trained to fetch a colored ball, for example a red, will fetch a ball of similar brightness, i.e. the same shade of gray. And there is some truth to what they say, because just because a dog can learn to differentiate between an object of two different colors doesn't necessarily mean that they can perceive those colors. It could just mean that they can differentiate the difference in brightness between those two objects, very much like how protans distinguish red and green traffic lights primarily based on their brightness. And I want to believe this guy, but how can you trust someone who puts a word like fetch in quotation marks like it's some brand new word that all the teenagers are using nowadays. That is so fetch. Gretchen, stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. Let's maybe try another researcher, uh, Dr. Jay Knights. Now you may recognize this name because he became quite well known 10 years ago when he led a team that successfully cured color blindness in monkeys. But I'm not convinced yet. Before you trust him, let's just hear him say fetch. All right, looks good, let's continue. 20 years before he cured color blindness, Jay Knights was part of a wave of researchers that determined the color vision of animals using behavioral tests. The concept is pretty simple. You present an animal with two colors and then use food to train them to always select the same color. Then you shift the colors closer together until the animal can no longer successfully pick the color that earns them food, indicating they can no longer tell the difference. This process was applied to all sorts of animals, from dogs to bees and goldfish to tree shrews. And Knights himself chose dogs because, well, he knew that no one would eventually make a YouTube video about the color blindness of, of, of tree shrews. As Knights put it, The results of our color vision tests are all consistent with the conclusion that dogs have dichromatic color vision. And okay, he wasn't the most engaging writer back then, but what he showed was that dogs essentially do not see in black and white. Other researchers that replicated his studies basically said, we concur, but we use different breeds of dogs, so we're still contributing to science. Please publish us. Then why do people still say that dogs are colorblind when it has been shown definitively that dogs can see color? Well, that's because people really love to use the ambiguous word colorblind even though what they usually mean is color vision deficient. When Knight says that dogs are dichromatic, he's saying that they only have two cones and therefore have worse color vision than humans. For a refresher, any animal that only has one type of cone cell in their retinas is monochromatic, and this means they see in black and white. For example, marine mammals are monochromatic. Dogs' dichromacy allows them to interpret some color by comparing the level of excitement of their L cones to the level of excitement of their S cones. However, they still have one fewer cone type than the three-coned trichromats, which is a group that includes most humans. To contrast the differences between dichromatic color vision and trichromatic color vision, I generally like to use the analogy of spatial dimensions. A monochromat's color vision is 1D, it fits on a line, i.e. the grayscale. A dichromat's color vision is 2D, and it fits in a square, and a trichromat's color vision is 3D, and it fits within a cube. So trichromatic humans see way more color than dichromatic dogs, and, and for most people that's good enough to say that dogs are color vision deficient relative to a typical human. 
but how does dichromacy work? What the hell does 2D color vision mean? What do dogs see and, and how would we know that if you know they can't describe their vision to us? Let's briefly look back at the cones from episode five. Now recall that their, their spectral characteristics, their sensitivity curves, have peaks for humans at 420, 530, and 560 nanometers. To contrast to that, the dog's two cones have peaks at 430 and 550 nanometers. Now, if I just take away one of these human cones, all of a sudden the dogs and humans start to look pretty similar, especially when I remind you that the human red cone is actually most sensitive to yellow light, and we only call it the red cone because it absorbs more red than the other two cones. And maybe it shouldn't surprise you that this two cone version of, of, a, of a human is pretty much exactly what I as a dichromat have in my retina. In fact, the color vision of human deuteranopes and, and protonopes uh, is way closer to the color vision of a dog than it is to the color vision of standard, boring, trichromatic humans. So with my essentially canine color vision here, allow me to vouch for pretty much exactly what dogs can and can't see. And let's clear up some misconceptions about dogs' color vision and by proxy also about human color blindness. Now a rich source of these misconceptions is the fact that people still use informal or outdated names for the cones called red, green, and blue. Likewise, dogs' cones are referred to often as blue and yellow. So when someone hears dogs only have blue and yellow cones, they interpret that in really funny ways, like... Essentially, this means that your dog perceives the world in yellow, blue, and gray. Which is, is total trash. Like, if that's how color vision worked, then humans would only see the colors red, green, and blue, and the rest would all be gray, which obviously is, is total poppycock. They do not see the colors red, green, and oranges the same way we do. Okay, this, this is absolutely correct. Instead, they see those colors in either yellow or blue. No, not only does red not become gray, red does also not become blue or yellow. I can see red. Dogs can see red. It's just some shades of red can appear to be green, brown, orange, etc. Just like some shades of green, brown, orange, etc. can appear to be red. The confusion is a two-way street. They may not be able to distinguish colors from each other within a certain color scheme. Exactly. That's, that's exactly how it works. For example, a blade of grass might look gray. And no, she fumbled it. I mean, grass would never look gray. It would look green or it would look orange, which is a color that is ambiguously green or orange, but it would never look gray. And this statement is made so much sadder by her very next sentence. Remember guys, anyone could be a scientist or an engineer with some passion, hard work, and innate curiosity of how the world works. And yeah, I, I guess anyone can be a scientist or engineer if you don't give a shit about the veracity of what they're claiming. But, um, next video. It is interesting to note that many pet products have red color designs, even though dogs can't perceive it. No, do dogs, we, 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 can, we can see red. Why do people keep saying that? Interestingly enough though, dogs cannot perceive the color red at all. No, stop saying that. I'm, I am figuratively <laughs> starting to see red, but, um, but go on. But the most popular color for dog toys is, guess it, red. So it's actually a better idea to buy dogs blue and yellow toys because they have a hard time being able to identify red objects anywhere near green things like grass. Okay, just because a blue ball stands out more to a dog than a red ball when it's on grass does not mean that dogs prefer blue over red. You wouldn't prefer the blue steak over the red steak just because it stands out at the butcher. Just buy the colored dog toy that your dog likes. And if anecdotal evidence from the comment section of a 15-year-old blog post is to be believed, then dogs actually prefer red over other colors of toys, despite it not popping out as much when it's on grass. Besides, apparently you have to be careful when you get blue toys as well, because according to one very trustworthy source on YouTube, If you throw a blue ball in blue water, it's going to blend in and all be gray and the dog will lose it. No, 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 no. Put... Putting blue on blue will not somehow magically make them both look gray. That's, that's not how anything works. It's, it's just preposterous. So, and again, we can't test a dog to see if some dogs may be more or less better colorblind or less colorblind. More or less better colorblind or less colorblind. Um, 
this is exactly why I script my videos. And yes, you can absolutely test dogs to see how colorblind they are. That's exactly what we discussed in this video. So look, we've shown that dogs are not fully colorblind and that their dichromatic vision is functionally equivalent to humans with color vision deficiency, and therefore we just we, we call them colorblind. But allow me to argue, maybe philosophically, once and for all, that dogs are neither colorblind nor are they color vision deficient for the plain reason that dogs are not humans, despite you absolutely treating Sergeant Wigglebottom like he's a person. We don't call snakes slow, or chickens deaf, or horses dumb, because it just makes no sense to directly compare these attributes to humans. If most mammals were trichromatic, and dogs were the lone or one of a few dichromatic species, then yeah, it might make sense to label dogs as colorblind for being an outlier. But on the contrary, almost all mammals, with the exceptions of primates and some second-rate marsupials, are dichromatic and really who gives a shit about the fat-tailed dunnert? It makes sense to call human dichromats, like myself, color vision deficient because we are the minority within our species. However, if, if dichromatic species make up the vast majority of mammals, does it still make sense to be referring to dogs as colorblind? It's like saying that anyone with an IQ below 130 is an idiot. Let's take an even further step back and increase our scope from mammals to all animals. A majority of fish, bird, and reptile species are tetrachromatic, meaning they have four cones. If dogs are colorblind relative to humans, then it would follow that humans are colorblind relative to tetrachromats, which would mean that all humans are colorblind. <laughs> Actually, I mean, we should really just call all animals colorblind when compared to the animal with the highest order color vision, such as the pentachromatic pigeon or the possibly pentadecachromatic blue bottle butterfly, which has an astounding 15 types of cones. That's, that, that's 15 dimensional color vision. That's, that's more dimensions than string theory. But even this is a huge oversimplification because color vision dimensions are not the only determiner of, of color vision. Now imagine a lowly colorblind dichromatic animal except the sensitivity peaks of their two cones lie in the infrared and the ultraviolet parts of the spectrum. Trichromatic humans would distinguish more colors than them, but the dichromat would see a larger range of the electromagnetic spectrum. Who's colorblind then? And what about a tetrachromatic animal who has 40 color vision, but in each one of those dimensions has a lower resolution, so therefore sees fewer colors than a normal trichromatic human? Who's colorblind then? Dear sea lions, you may be monochromatic, but you evolved from a common mammalian ancestor with four cones. So you obviously evolved exactly the type of color vision that you need to suit your purposes. You may smell like a wet fart and sound like a wet fart, but don't listen to humans when they call your color vision deficient. Haters gonna hate. Sincerely, Protan. So are dogs colorblind? No. Are dogs color vision deficient? No. Do dogs have a different color vision system than, than normal humans? Yes. But dogs have exactly the color perception that they need in order to be man's best friend. This is chromophobe.